Good afternoon, everyone. We hope that you're enjoying your lunch. Um, and we hope you actually enjoyed some of the workshop sessions that you sat in this morning and that you learned a great deal. So at this, for a few minutes, we would like to actually present our H. Jack Geiger Awardees um, that we usually do for the National Center for Health in Public Housing. And this year, um, these, awardees, these awards are usually dedicated to public housing primary care health centers that have done or excelled in the areas of program management, performance improvement, and program development and analysis. We know about the dedication, the commitment, the long hours you do, the hard outreach to residents in public housing as community health centers. And without that work, so many residents would not have been able to get the quality of care that they currently receive in your, in your states. And so we at, um, at the National Center for Health and Public Housing like to recognize all of our health center grantees who have been really mobilizes in their communities for residents. So all of you are champions, and I wish every year we can give the award to every single health center um, that's in the primary public housing primary care program, but we do like to try and highlight at least three of you every single year. So with that, um, to join me today on today's presentation of awards, I am honored to have Mr. Percy Devine from the Administration for Community Living. And um, I would like to let you know that all of the recipients are here also in the program. One of the health centers is not here today, but we will make sure that they get their uh, spotlight as well. So the National Center for Health and Public Housing is proud to present the third annual H. Jack Geiger Awards at this 2013 Health Center and Public Housing Symposium. Dr. H. Jack Geiger's legacy has been devoted to problems of health, poverty, and human rights, combining community-oriented primary care, public health, interventions, civil rights, community development initiatives and research interests focus on racial and ethnic disparities in medical care. Dr. Geiger has made significant contributions in advocating for quality health care for the less fortunate through the work of community health centers. In the words of Dr. Geiger, the real honor in is in having such an award created and named for me to stimulate and reward the work of others in the future in the ongoing struggle for equity in healthcare, most particularly for such vulnerable populations as public housing residents. This year, we are pleased to present the third annual H. Jack Geiger Awards to the following emerging leaders in the public housing primary care program. Our first award goes to Kokua Kalihi Valley Comprehensive Family Services, and this H. Jack Geiger Award is recognized for excellence in performance improvement. We would like to congratulate them, if we can all join our hands for them. And unfortunately, they were not able to be with us here today, um, but we do have their award, and which we're going to show you. And if you don't mind holding it up, so you can take it out. And we would like to, um, we'll make sure that we mail it to them. All right, so again, congratulations to this particular health center. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, our next award goes to Med Centro. This is the H. Jack Geiger Award recipient, recognized for significant impact in the areas of program development and analysis. So I would like to invite all of the health center staff here um, from Med Centro to please come forward. Thank you.
Good afternoon to all our colleagues from across the nation. Uh, it's an honor for us to receive this uh, award on behalf of the heroes that every day goes out to every public housing and gave their very best to serve the people uh, they encounter with so much uh, need. Uh, public housings in Puerto Rico are not easy. Uh, they are not easy across the nation, but in our case, they have become uh, uh, shelters for drug dealers and uh, crime, and uh, they are very tough areas to serve. So tough that we do have to make sometimes uh, pseudo uh, collaborative agreements with the drug lords to be able to provide services to the people we serve. Long time ago, I learned from a friend in Boston. Uh, we were doing a cross uh, uh, training with uh, boys from public housings in Puerto Rico and boys from public housings in Boston. Uh, and we were at Villa Victoria in Boston. And I asked this friend of mine whose name is uh, uh, Bob Woodson, and I asked Bob, what is the most important uh, quality that a a community leader should have, and he answered with a single word that still is prevails, and I think and I believe is the most important quality every one of us should have, passion. We might not be in compliance in many things. We might be in compliance with many things. Still, passion is the most important thing. After everything else is, is, is over, passion will prevail and will lead us again to work with these communities and bring them forth. So uh, we really thank you very much for this award. We'll certainly take it home with us with big pride, and we will share it with those heroes serving out there. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Congratulations to Med Central. Our next award is presented to West End Medical Centers, and they have earned the H. Jack Geiger Award for Outstanding Leadership in Program Management. So we would like to ask the staff of West End Medical Centers to please come forward to accept the award. Well, <laughs> this is such an honor, and you know I'm a softie, those who know me, but um, this really is. We've come a long way with the Public Housing Primary Care Program, and it is truly an honor and a privilege to be recognized for um, the work that many of us do on the front line, the grassroots effort. Um, throughout the many years, we've been at this 22 years now, um, officially, um, before then also. Um, so we are the voice for those who are voiceless, um, those who have been seniors in the communities that have seen the communities grow um, to even the third and fourth generation of patients that we've been able to provide care to. And even as we've met the challenges in Atlanta of our uh, changing landscape of housing, um, public housing, we've still maintained the pulse of those that we have been um, given the privilege to provide care to. And, and in the presence of uh, Dr. Brooks, I just want to say um, thank you um, that under his leadership, uh, we've continued on um, with this struggle and with this fight and uh, the vision and the opportunity to allow us to tread new waters and new territories in the changing landscape is truly um, where our heart is. So thank you. Yeah. 
I would like to thank the National Center for the Award, but I want to publicly thank Karen. Uh, Karen was the, we were one of the initial grantees for public housing, and she's been in a leadership role since we started, and without her enthusiasm and, and just spirit to get everything done, we wouldn't be in the position we are today. And it's because of her commitment to public housing residents, we can excel and, and get awards like this. So I just want to publicly thank her for all her hard work, and thank you. Thank you, and congratulations again to West End Medical Center. So please join our hands. Let's join our hands and congratulate all of our grantees this year. They truly deserved it. Um, and so, like I said, I will not uh, hold you back from enjoying your desserts and so forth. So, um, again, um, we have one announcement. Someone apparently lost a pearl earring, and it's actually at the registration desk. So, um, if you've lost it, please retrieve it there. And Dr. Sam Little, we'd like to ask you to come over as well. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, and I bring you a warm hello from the National Alliance of Resident Services in Affordable and Assisted Housing, an organization called NARSA. Um, there will be a conference October the 2nd through the 5th in Miami that will bring out resident services professionals resident leaders, commissioners, service providers, and the network of individuals who work with public and assisted housing and who do capacity building work. Um, this will be the 12th conference of the organization. Traditionally, seven to 800 leaders from around the country attended and used it as a professional development and, promo and promotional um, event for those who are the ground troops in public housing who run a public and assisted housing and who uh, serve um, and provide services to uh, families in a range of areas. I want to invite everyone in this room to participate and to attend that conference and just visit the NARSA website. Just Google the word NARSA N-A-R-S-A-A-H, and the conference information is posted. But during these tough economic times in particular, we can't afford to give up any of the platforms to empower, improve services, expand partnerships, and find ways to give um, recognition to the ground troops who improve the quality of life for families. And that's what this conference is about. Um, NARSA and this organization have been friends and uh, partners uh, for a number of years. We appreciate the relationship and we enjoy the many activities that we do on an annual basis to improve the quality of life for families. Um, communities that continue to grow, families that remain healthy, families that remain happy, uh, are families that are, are vibrant and are communities that are vibrant and all of us have a way and an opportunity to make a contribution to that. So we invite you to participate and we'll uh, warmly welcome you to Miami uh, on October the 2nd through the 5th at the Hyatt uh, Regency. Thank you and enjoy the conference. 